Hey everyone, Real Talk here. Today we're talking about the biggest issue with the ENTP personality type as I see it. The biggest issue with the ENTP personality type is wasted potential. Yeah, a lot of ENTPs are very intelligent and very ingenious, witty, smart, able to think of solutions to problems, able to come up with options, able to see alternatives, able to spot opportunities, they have open minds, they're pragmatic, they're resource efficient, they are typically very influential and strong and good at putting their ideas to the practice. However, a lot of ENTPs end up living and wasting their lives on easy decisions, small problems and short term issues. Yeah, what I see is a lot of ENTPs move from thing to thing, never really committing to anything. Some small ideas here and some small ideas there, you know, like a few a little a few bucks you can make on that job and then a few bucks you can make doing that and you know, a lot of ENTPs have this mentality of what is easy, what is quick, what can I do as fast as possible? How can I get as much as possible by walking as little as possible. So a lot of ENTPs think of reasons to procrastinate and to sit on their ass on the couch like I'm doing right now, but perhaps without even recording a video while doing it. So the way I thought about it, okay, is what can an ENTP do to grow? What can an ENTP do to challenge themselves? How can an ENTP more effectively use their intuition and avoid falling into this trap? Now. The first things first, I believe ENTPs should set bigger challenges for themselves. You know, if an INTPA personality type is always going to set impossible challenges, you know, impossible goals and projects that are going to take an entire lifetime to complete and they're going to need so much resources and time and work and productivity. The ENTP will often think of, you know, the smallest possible project, the simplest possible idea, the most efficient possible way to do something. So in that way, ENTPs and INTJs, they're the exact opposite of one another. And that's why I think a lot of ENTPs should, in the conceptualization stage of a project, think like INTJs. What you should do as an ENTP is you should study like the great gifted minds of INTJs and you should mimic their approach to setting projects and to developing a plan or developing an idea. You should spend the time on the drawing table to conceptualize and make an idea as big as possible before you go to action. You should think of a few rules and some limitations and some boundaries that are going to make your work a little bit more difficult but also a little bit more successful than it would have been otherwise. You should think of and set a longer time frame than what you have in your mind for something. You should say instead of doing something in one month you should say I'll take a year to do it. Instead of thinking oh I'll take a week and then I'll finish it and then I'll sell it and then it will be great. I'll earn some money and it will be perfect you know. Instead, you should say, okay, I'm going to sit down with this and for a few weeks or a month, making sure everything is right, and then I'm going to put it out to the market. So, as an ENTP, the lesson today is think like an INTJ in the conceptualization stage and think like an ENTP in the execution stage. Develop that critical thinking and that and some of that perfectionism that you see in INTJs, you know, to truly make sure every idea is in the right place and everything is perfect and everything is put to work. And then take your pragmati pragmatism and your ability to turn profit from an idea and your ability to convince others and to market and to sell something and to trade with others and to argue your way forward to solve the problems of this project. You know, ideally you want your project to sound as daunting and difficult as possible before you put it to action. You want to truly frighten yourself by thinking as big as possible. You want to drive yourself a little bit insane thinking about how long it's going to take. You want to challenge yourself, you want to push yourself. You want to set some rules for yourself to make it as difficult as possible for yourself. 
You want beyond that to put yourself in a position of focus. So the way I see it is you have to set and think of ways to avoid distractions. You know, if your ENTP mind is always going like, uh, that would, would be fun and that would be fun and that could be nice and that could be great and that could be interesting. You want to find a way to keep yourself from getting distracted. And what I mean with this is uh, lock away yourself in a hotel room, have somebody barricade the door. I mean, give away your phone, you know, and don't come out until you're done, you know, that kind of thing. I think you want to learn to use external tools to uh, make sure you stick to a strategy that you keep by the rules and that you keep working at something longer than you normally might want to. Yeah, here what you can do is you can rely on the help of friends and family members or a partner or you can use tools and books and guides and other strategies just to keep your mind in check sometimes, you know, because there is something great that happens, some kind of magic tends to happen when you discipline an open mind, you know, when you take an open mind and you channel that openness to one particular idea and one particular area for a longer time. Some kind of magic happens, you know, because you can discover more, much more than what most people can. You can see a lot more options. You can see a lot more opportunities. You have a bigger eyes. You have more open eyes. You have wider eyes. You have more conceptual eyes. You have fantasy and imagination. And that's your strength. That That's your superpower. So you want to channel your open mind to eliminate long distances quickly. I mean, as soon as you have this big project, this daunting issue, that's when you want to start thinking of shortcuts. That's when you want to think of ways to do this more efficiently. That's when you want to start thinking, okay, now I have this big idea. Now I, this, this and this is going to take so much time. How can I do this as fast as possible? Here is where your intuition can flourish. Beyond that, when you have a lot of rules and limitations faced on you, like you can only use this much resources, you can only uh, do it here and at this time, you have to follow these and these rules and ethical pro frameworks, you know, when you do it, those rules also serve as kind of guiding lights for your thinking. So when you know about these things, you can also start to barter and trade and think and come up with solutions, you know. The more obstacles there are, the more inspired your mind is to think of solutions. That's something about ENTPs, you know, ENTPs thrive the most when they are challenged. However, they tend to eliminate challenges very quickly and they tend to solve problems very, very, very quickly. And what that means is a lot of the time they're under stimulated, under motivated. You know, there is nothing to do, like there is no challenge, there is... Everything is easy, you're always the first, you're always there before anyone else, you know. So what can you do to keep yourself stimulated? How can you keep and make sure that there is a steady stream of obstacles out there to make things difficult for you? What can you make do to make sure that you keep your motivation? You know, a problem that an ENTP will face is eventually you run out of motivation, eventually you run out of enthusiasm, you know, you can only stay enthusiastic about something for as long as there are challenges and obstacles that can keep you from getting there. For as long as that idea feels big and mysterious and deep and far-reaching, much more far-reaching than what you are right now. The f as soon as you feel you've gotten to the finish line, that's when you lose your steam, you know. If you feel, oh, I've gotten there, I've done it, it was easy, it was no problem. You start immediately looking for the next thing, you know. Your mind has this kind of checklist mentality. And that means you take move and then you take another move and then you take another move. And then you're, as soon as you've taken a move, you start thinking of the next move. And a lot of the time that's the issue with the ENTP mind, you know, if you always see and finish a project too quickly and this is the bad habit you finish projects too quickly you skim through things you read out and finish a book faster than what you should have 
you uh, read through and uh, study an idea quicker than what you want to. You make an idea too small. You make a possibility too limited. You make it too narrow. You start making things superficial. Yeah, through this, intuition can be very, very far-reaching and deep. Intuition can stretch a lifespan to complete. Or even more than that, intuition can be something huge. Something very raw, very deep, very time-consuming. But for an ENTP, it can also be something extremely simple, extremely fast, extremely shallow, and extremely pointless. And that's the ENTP's blind spot, making an idea too small in your mind, making a problem too easy, making, a, making an option just an option, just a quick thing, just a quick configuration, a quick... And then it's done. In doing this, actually what tends to happen is you go towards extroverted sensing. Yes, extroverted sensing becomes a uh, bigger influence in your life. You mark the idea itself, you mark the potential of something, you mark the ability of something because you can't believe in anything, you know? And here's the problem for ENTPs, can they ever truly believe in something? Can they ever truly trust that their intuition is as great as they think maybe it could be in their own minds. So what I see is a lot of ENTPs turn their projects into a yoke. They turn it into something silly, something, oh, it's never going to lead anywhere. It's just something small, you know, it's nothing big, you know. And here's the reason why we do that. A lot of people do this. They, we make our dreams and aspirations smaller because we want to keep ourselves from being afraid. And uh, yeah... I know a lot of you ENTPs will say, oh, I'm never afraid of anything, and oh, I don't have that at all, and oh, Eric, you're bullshitting us. <laughs> what are you saying? Fear, that's not for me, I'm an ENTP, eh? come on. But the thing is, fear is a prevalent factor in all personality types, and even in you as an ENTP, even if you don't notice it the same way other types might, and even if you don't even think about it. Through this, you are daunted by big challenge. Through this, you are afraid of big ideas. And you are afraid that ideas will just run into the sand. You know, when you set an opportunity that is too big, too far-reaching, you also feel as if, what if I don't make it? What if I don't realize this opportunity? You know, extroverted intuitives have a huge fear of Failing to realize an opportunity present, you know, if you feel there is an opportunity, you want to realize it as quickly as possible. And a way to do that is make the opportunity as small as possible. So that's the bad habit. You systematically question and run away from bigger opportunities while seizing the small opportunities to keep yourself off from taking on a project that is more difficult than what you feel you can handle. Yeah, truth of the matter is, as much as you believe in your ability to solve problems and as confident as you feel, you are daunted by bigger challenges. You know, what if there is a problem you can't solve? What if there is a task or a challenge you can't reach? What if you can't jump high enough? What if you can't be as strong as you think you are? What if you can't be as fast as you think you might be in your head, you know? That's why I say ENTPs should study the INTJ personality type. I mean, the INTJ personality type shows, more than any other personality type, the ability to be unfazed by the inability to meet perfectionistic expectations. Despite the fact that the INTJ is such a perfectionist, despite the fact that their visions are often grand and impossible to achieve, they seem completely undaunted by the thought of them. They seem completely confident in their ability to see it through. They seem completely like they believe their ideas are true. Even though they sound to you as an ENTP frankly ridiculous. 
So there's something inspiring about this. How can they believe in this? How can they walk towards this impossible goal? How can they dedicate so much time to this? What if they fail? What if they don't make it? What if they don't actually know what they think they know? What if they can't live up to their perfectionistic expectations? So here as an ENTP you're kind of faced with a conundrum. While you are a person that tends to feel big projects are difficult, they're scary, while you tend to feel long-term visions and long-term projects are a potential waste of time and a potential disappointment, other people don't feel this way. There are other types out there that have somehow managed to build and generate a huge amount of confidence and self-esteem in the face of these situations. So, as an ENTP, you want to start learning from these people. You want to start feeling inspired by them. You want to start feeling like, if they can do it, I can too. Now, there are ENTPs out there that have managed to achieve huge projects, huge goals, huge milestones for themselves. There are ENTPs out there that also end up living through most of their life, you know, just drifting from thing to thing, you know, never amounting to anything, you know. None of these ENTPs are necessarily more happy than the other, you know. They're, it's possible that you can find some kind of happiness in just drifting to here to there, you know, uh, having some short-term relationship, you know, for fun, you know. Uh, then uh, moving on when it got difficult, you know, uh, quitting a job when uh, things got a bit too stressful for you or having a small idea for a, like, big shop or a restaurant and then, uh, maybe it was too much, you know, maybe I'll just sell a sandwich for a few weeks. And some ENTPs fall through this and they, they're okay with it, you know, and they can find some kind of happiness in this. Not everyone is, uh, needs to have a big or grand life. But I want to argue and I want you to get yourself thinking, do I want this? And I know your mind is great thinking of reasons not to want anything, you know, reasons to take things simple and to, to keep things easy for yourself and to keep things, you know, that way. I think the ENTP mind is great at that. But resist this desire to question just for a minute. Resist this desire to just argue against me for a second here and think even if, if I can't think of an argument not to do something, maybe I should do it anyways. Maybe if I can think of an argument why this will fail, maybe I should still try. Maybe even though I can think of an easier way to do something, I should do it the hard way. Those are my words to you as an ENTP, and my hope is that this will help you as an ENTP grow and take the next, next step in your life, maybe start up the next project. And I'm saying here, it doesn't have to be something huge, but it can be something slightly bigger, just slightly bigger than what you're used to. You know, you, can, you don't have to set an impossible challenge for yourself. Just a small extra challenge, just a small extra step, just a small thing that will get you a little bit further than you would have gotten otherwise. Yeah, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching and hope to see you all in the next video.